The truth of the matter is you was made to release the blood of Jesus over your mind, over your possessions, over your decisions, over your pathway every single day. You're supposed to release the blood of Jesus with your words. You release the authority of the blood when you take your vocabulary and you speak it into existence. The cross of Christ was containing so much power to reset your brain, to deliver the mind and the body from all levels of demonic strongholds. The mind throughout the course of your life gets involved in things that are illegal, thought patterns that are demonic. It's wrong. So the Holy Spirit has to set you free. The blood of Jesus is a new nature being given to you. The blood of Jesus is a new nature being given to your mind. A new nature. And, and the word nature is, is really emphasizing what becomes natural to you. It's natural to you to do evil. You have to learn the, naturali the naturality of righteousness. Righteousness is not natural to anybody at first. Even religiously, because you learn things that appear as if it's of God, but it's really a form of godliness that makes you deny the power. So when you get into the, the real stages of what the blood of Jesus and the cross of Jesus is carrying. It is an implantation of God's personality in you, for you, with you. The blood of Jesus, you, you must speak it over everywhere you go because people are not listening to Jesus. People are listening to the spirits that they have you must speak the blood of Jesus in order for the safety to be strong in every environment that you go. The blood of Jesus, it restores your mind back to beauty. Because the mind takes on all these ugly traits. You get jealous of people. You get bitter. You get hurt by people that reject you. And always remember that when people reject you, there is a revelation to the rejection. Rejection is an opportunity for you to display dominion over your soul. It's an opportunity for you to use the blood of Jesus for your soul. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, is the redemption is the redemption of the children of God. What does redemption mean? That you get a chance to rewrite your story, rewrite your decisions. You have a chance to do something different. Redemption doesn't, doesn't just mean I get delivered from the water where the sharks are. Redemption means I receive power not to go back to that water where the, shark, where the sharks were. Did you catch that? Redemption is not just I got rescued from the sharks in the water, but redemption is also I, re I received deliverance to crave those waters where the sharks were. So if you understand what redemption in the blood of Jesus is about, it's not God rescuing you every time that you make a bad decision. It is also you having the power to avoid bad decisions. Are you catching that? Oftentimes, the blood is used in a beggarly place. I'm struggling. I need help. But when the blood is received with the correct revelation, and when the blood is received with correctness, now you understand that the blood starts to deal with areas of your life having power 
over the fleshly mind. That you won't even allow yourself to lose what you have gained in the spirit world. Every time you obey God, you start gaining in the spirit world. What, what are you gaining? You're gaining God's attributes. You're gaining his flow of thinking. You're gaining his way of talking. You're gaining his point of view. Those things can get tarnished very easily. So you have to receive the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is a system that is developed by the devil so that you'll do things that hurt God. So that his spirit will be wounded by your works. Unrighteousness is where the words you pick, they become arrows in God's heart. They bruise God. They batter God. And unrighteousness creates an abusive relationship with you and God. It becomes toxic. God suffers in your presence. The Bible said that he suffers long. Unrighteousness is where Satan encourages you to disrespect God's rules for your life. When you disrespect God, the power of God weans because his power is connected to the gratification he has of seeing you submit to him. That's why I say he gives more grace to the humble in James chapter four, because he's given the grace because he's enjoying seeing the submission that you're yielding to his ways. So when, when, when you have spirits that are not of God in your life, they give you ideas to do, to say, to connect with people that will affect God negatively. And when you hurt God, you cannot move in his power that he destined you to move in. Because the same way, if you have a chef and you cuss them out, their creativity in cooking will cease their creativity in, in, in adding on things to the meal because their brain is marred with being cussed out when God is disrespected by you through unrighteousness the power of God is stunted and let me say this lastly to you for you to understand these things why would God emphasize being obedient if obedience doesn't produce a different outcome than disobedience? If we all have the same outcome, why do we pray for wisdom? If we all going to have the same outcome with God, why walk in self-control? So if we all going to have the same outcome, why is there such a pull by the Holy Spirit for you? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask liberally. Let, let, him ask, um, let him ask of God who giveth wisdom liberally to all. So the Lord has an outcome for wisdom and he has an outcome for foolishness. So always remember... When you are making a dedication to something, the results are different than if you're not making the dedication. When you make a dedication to someone who is the Holy Spirit of God, the results are different than when you have no dedication to the Holy Spirit. Your life is different. The Bible say in the book of Proverbs that the way of the transgressor is hard. Is saying that when you are disrespecting God, you live a hard life. You live a life that is difficult. You know, and, and we're we, we talking about mentally because psychologically, if you don't have peace, the Bible said that there's no peace to the wicked. If you don't have peace with God, you don't have the peace of God, and you don't have the peace from God. If you don't have peace with God, you got to have peace with God to have the peace 
from God and the peace of God that guards your heart and mind through Christ Jesus.